Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. This series of videos provides work solutions for the GCSE Maths Topic Test produced by AQA. This video is Ratio and Proportion. Whilst these topic tests make excellent exam preparation and revision material, regardless of which exam board you're sitting, they are particularly useful for students studying for AQA as they are prepared by the same team who will be writing your papers in the summer. They will work best if you try and answer the questions yourself before watching the video. The topic test papers can be downloaded from this address, which I've also linked in the description below. Uh, they will require a teacher account to access, so either ask your maths teacher to download and share them with you, or alternatively you can try pausing the video and attempting the question first before pressing play again to listen to my solutions. Check this playlist for all the other topics I've covered. I'm busy recording all of these topic tests, so if the particular topic you're looking for isn't there yet, why not drop me a comment below with your request and subscribe to my channel to receive notification of future uploads. If there is anything you don't understand, please ask in the comments, make sure you mention the question number and try to be as specific as possible. I try to answer all questions promptly, especially around exam time. If you found the video useful, please do hit the like button as this really helps me out. You might also like to check out my exam paper walkthroughs covering all the recent papers and practice papers from AQA. Just click on the card appearing at the top of the screen now. OK, let's get started. Before we get started, I'm just going to show the blank question paper. Uh, so if you don't have a copy, you can now pause it and have a go at the questions first. And then once you're finished, you can start again and look at the answers. OK. Welcome along to another topic test. Today we're looking at ratio and proportion at foundation level, although it would be quite a good introduction uh, to higher tier students as well. Uh, question one. The workers in the company are in the ratio of female to male of 1 to 4.5. What fraction of the workers are female? Now with a ratio you compare what you've got with what you don't have and in a fraction you compare what you've got with everything. So if the ratio of female to male is in the ratio of one part to 4.5 parts then altogether that is 1 plus 4.5 parts which is 5.5 parts. Okay so that's 5.5 parts altogether uh, so what fraction of the workers are female? Well, the female ones are the first number, aren't they? They're this number here. And then if we're saying that they're 5.5 parts altogether, of which one part are female, then the fraction that are female is going to be 1 over 5.5. Now, not quite finished yet, have we? Because a fraction can't really have a decimal as a denominator. So let's just double up each of these to get rid of the, the decimal number. So we're going to write it as an equivalent fraction. Uh, so 1 times 2 is 2. 5.5 times 2 is 11. So my answer is 2 elevenths. Part 1b says the company has 150 female workers. How many workers are there altogether? OK, so we've already been given the ratio of female to male employees. It was 1 to 4.5. Now, if we're told that there are 150 females, we can use this ratio to kind of work out how many males there are. Uh, if we started with one female and then we've multiplied up to get 150 females, we can do the same thing on the other side. So let's just scale this up by a factor of 150. So to work out the number of males, uh, then we need to times 4.5 by 150. So times it by 4, double and double again. So 150 doubled is 300, doubled again is 600. And 0.5 of 150 is another 75. So that makes 675 males altogether. So then how many is that altogether then? So males, 675 plus females, 150. How many is that altogether then? That's 5. 7 and 5 make 12, so carry 1, 1, 6, 7, 8. I make that 825 employees altogether then. Question 2 says, 
the ratio of a to b is 2 to 7, and we're told that a squared is equal to 36. Work out the two possible values of b. Now notice this is highlighted. Uh, well, it's emboldened, isn't it? So there are two possibilities. Uh, now that derives from the fact that if a squared is equal to 36, there's actually two possible values of a, isn't there? a is going to be, well, uh, what times itself is 36? Well, it's either 6 or it could be minus 6 because negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. So we say the solution is plus or minus 6. So a could be 6 or a could be minus 6. So let's, uh, let's take our original ratio of a to b that we were given. We're told they're in the ratio of 2 to 7. So now if we're saying that a is 6, then what's b going to be? Now you'll see from here to here, to go from 2 to 6, that's times in by 3. So if I've times the left-hand side by 3, to keep things equivalent, I'm going to have to times the right-hand side by 3 as well. 7 times 3 is 21. So if a is 6, then b is 21. So one of my answers is 21. Now what about if a is not 6, but it's negative 6? So I can go from 6 to negative 6 by times in by negative 1. So if I did the same thing to the other side, if I could take this side of my ratio and also times it by negative 1, I'm going to get minus 21. So it could be that b is 21 or it's negative 21. Question 3. A box contains 192 pens. They are red, green or blue. A quarter of the pens are red uh, and the ratio of green pens to blue pens is 1 to 8. How many blue pens are there? Okay, so I'm just going to go through and highlight from the question the bits of information that are useful. So I know that altogether we have 192 pens. That's super useful to know. Uh, a quarter of the pens are red. Oops. Uh, is also very useful to know. And then the ratio of green pens to blue pens is 1 to 8. Okay, so they're the three bits of information I'm going to use in order to answer this question. Let's take uh, the first two bits of information first. That there are 192 pens altogether and a quarter of the pens are red. So how many red pens is that then? So if I take 192 and divide it by 4, find a quarter of it basically, a quarter of 192 which is 192 divided by 4, 4 is into 192, 4 is into 192, 4 is into 1 don't go, 4 is into 19 go 4 times remainder 3, and 4 is into 32 go 8 times, so that means that there are 48 red pens. Okay, so we've got 48 red pens. So how many pens are not red pens? Not red pens is going to be my 192 less my 48 pens that are red. So 192 subtract 48. 2 subtract 8 is, what's that, 4? Uh, if I take one away from there, it would be. Uh, leaving me with 8. 8 take away 4 is 4. Uh, and that's still one there then, isn't it? So that's 144 not red pens. Okay, so I've got 144 pens that are not red. So that means they must be green pens or blue pens. Now the ratio of uh, green to blue is 1 to 8. Green to blue is 1 to 8. So, uh, how many shares is that altogether? 1 plus 8 is 9. So if we divide 9 into 144, 1, 4, 4, divide by 9. 9 is into 144. 9 is into 14, go once. Uh, remainder 5. And 9 is into 54, go uh, 6 times, don't they? Okay. Remainder 0. So that means uh, I can then take this ratio of 1 to 8 
and scale it up by a factor of 16. And that will tell me how many green pens and blue pens there are. It's a bit like dividing by a ratio, isn't it? That's what I'm doing. So 16 times 1 is 16. What's 16 times 8? Uh, 16 times 8. 6 eighths are 48. Uh, 1 8 is 8 plus 4 is 12. So that's 128, isn't it? Just double check. 128 plus 16 is 144. Okay, so I think I found my answer then. So the number of blue pens then is this number here is 128. So I've got 128 blue pens. Question four. We're told that the ratio of x to y is 5 to 1. And then we're asked to circle the equation of y as a function of x. And I've got a few different choices here. Uh, now, if the ratio of x to y is 5 to 1, then that means that when x is equal to 5, y must be equal to 1 then, mustn't it? Uh, and then, let's just see if I can put those numbers into, into this equation and see if they work. So if y is equal to x over 5, then that is going to be equal to 5 over 6 then, isn't it? Uh, is that equal to 1? No, 5, 6 is not equal to 1, so it, it can't be that one. Next along, y is equal to x over 5. So if y is 5... So if x is 5, then that's equal to 5 over 5, and 5 over 5 is 1. So that one does seem to be true. Uh, let's just double check the others, though. Uh, next one along, y is equal to 5 lots of x. Now that is equal to 5 lots of 5, then, if x is 5, which is 25. So 25 is not the same thing as 1, so that one isn't true. And then finally, y equals 6 lots of x, so if x is 5 then 6 lots of 5 is 30. Uh, but that isn't equal to 1 either, is it? So it's not that one either. So the only one that works is this one here. y is equal to x over 5. OK. Right, part B says, show that x plus y to x minus y is the ratio 3 to 2. So if x is 5 when y is 1, like we said earlier, then x plus 5 then is going to be 5 plus 1, and x minus y is going to be 5 subtract 1. So 5 plus 1 is 6, 5 subtract 1 is 4, uh, and they're both even numbers, so we can divide them both by 2 to simplify them down a bit. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, and that gives us our ratio of 3 to 2. Okay, so we've shown that x plus y to x minus y is the ratio 3 to 2, as asked. Question 5. 90 hazelnuts have a mass of 125 grams. Hazelnuts have 630 calories per 100 grams. Work out the number of calories per hazelnut. Okay, so I'm gonna, I think I'm going to set this up like a big ratio to start with. Uh, so I'm going to have a three-part ratio. I'm going to have uh, the number of hazelnuts to mass to calories. Okay, and the first part of the question, this bit here says 90 hazelnuts have a mass of 125, K, uh, 125 grams. So I can write the ratio of 90 to uh, 125 as a ratio then, can't I? So the ratio of hazelnuts to mass is 90 to 125. Okay. Okay, I also know that uh, hazelnuts have 630 calories per 100 grams. So I could write the ratio of mass to calories is 600, uh, 100 to 630. Okay, what I want to do is try and link up these amounts, really. So I need to try and work, work out a way of getting uh, the mass is the same for both. Okay, now I can do that by taking my ratio of hazelnuts to mass and dividing it by 5 to start with. You'll see why in a moment. Uh, so if I divide both of those by 5, 
then 125 divided by 5 is 25 and 90 divided by 5 is 18 okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to times it by 4 and you'll see that 25 times 4 is 100 so then I can link up my two different um, ratios and make them 1 so 25 times 4 is 100 18 times 4 double it and double it again so 18 doubled is 36 doubled again is 72 okay so I've got a ratio of 72 to 100 to 630 okay so I know how these three things are now linked together now I want to know the number of calories per one hazelnut so I need to make this number here one and then work out what this number is on the end here Okay, now in order to do that, I need to take my ratio now and divide it by 72. Okay, and on the other side, divide by 72 as well. So what's 630 divided by 72? I might reach for a calculator for that one. Six hundred thirty divided by 72 is 8.75. So 8. Oops. So 8.75 calories per one hazelnut. So my answer is 8.75. Question six. Jake and Kim share some money in the ratio of one to three. Kim gets 90 pounds more than Jake. How much does Kim get? Hmm. Okay. So we know that the ratio of Jake to Kim is in the ratio of one to three and we know that Kim gets 90 more than Jake but we don't know what Jake gets so if we don't know something in maths we can use algebra so I'm going to put in an x for now for Jake uh, and then I can work out that Kim gets 90 more than Jake so Kim must get x plus 90 But if Jake and Kim's money is in the ratio of 1 to 3, if Jake got x, then another way of thinking about it is that Kim got 3x, three, three times as much as Jake. So x to x plus 90 must be the same thing as x to 3x. In other words, this x plus 90 must be the same thing as 3x. Um, so we can equate them. So I can say that x plus 90 is equal to... 3x. Okay, so I've got an equation in x which I can then solve. Uh, so let's take x away from both sides. So that will cancel, leaving me 90 on the left and 2x on the right, which means that x must be equal to 45. So if x is 45, uh, then a 3x is going to be 3 lots of 45. 45, 90, 135, which means that Jake gets 45, Kim gets 135. So how much does Tim, Kim get? Kim gets 135. All done. Well, that's that. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Also, check out the playlist on the right for more topic tests or the one down below for past papers. See you again next time.